I welcome y'all to the PPL Live Show. Shit's liver than the California side show. On the board, all the teams talking mad shit. Especially when the squad gets their ass kicked. PPL's like a bad bitch with an ass lift. Everybody wants to get some action. Make a trade while we're drafting. One of a kind, no other can match it. PPL, we're coming to you live. 12 years strong and we're never gonna die. Real talk so you know we'll never lie. Bending down 50 trying to win the whole pie. Let's get the shit cracking. Welcome to the best sports show on the planet. Tune in to the PPL Live Show. Kick your feet up like the blood. Get your eyes low. PPL gets you ready for the week. Co-host Matt Page shows hate when he speaks. Gina when the Jake gonna speak what he see. PPL, motherfucker, I'm a OG. I'm ready for the shit to get started. Time to find out who's good and who's garbage. It's time to find out who the next champ is. Trying to win the whole pot. Time to go cash in. World War Three. Time to load up your team. Hit the battlefield, leaving blood on the scene. You can speak what you think. I don't care what you mean. Focused on me, steady building my team. Now I'm sicker than COVID-19. DJ hop on the throne but I'm coming for a seat so is everyone else in the league I just don't see a challenger stronger than me with that said dog I'm ready for war now like I'm strapped in the hood kicking doors down PPL is my game now used to be fun but the shit in the game now bringing the pain now opposition laid down done with the flow dog nothing left to say now and that was our man Charlie White giving us the 2020 intro to PPL live welcome back ladies and gentlemen it is Gino the Gent here. I got my man Ulysses S. Hate here. We're here, ready, and set for week two of PPL Live. But before we get into week two, let's get our recap on the week one score. Starting with the United Players and Destroyers falling to the Argonauts, 169 to 101. Squad underestimated, flexes muscle, defeats only for the boss, 160 to 146. Appease the gods behind number one overall pick Clyde Edwards Hilaire defeats Patty Swins 121 to 97. The Mean Machine gets back in the winner circles, defeating the Baby Gas team 112 to 94. And the Gaff Attack, with the surprise performance of the week, opens the week with a strong performance, scoring 142 to the disappointing Skulls 68. All right. And now, ladies and gents, we're going to announce the Leave No Doubts Player of the Week. We have two Leave No Doubt Player of the Weeks this year. I'm going to have my Leave No Doubt Player of the Week, and Ulysses will also have his Leave No Doubt Player of the Week. My Leave No Doubt Player of the Week is the Argonauts' own Devontae Adams. Devontae had 14 catches for over 150 yards with two touchdowns, and he also uh, left the Argonauts with 35 points as they left no doubt in their matchup. Ulysses, who's your uh, Leave No Doubt Player of the Week? My Leave No Doubt Player of the Week, Week 1, Tyler Murray. Um, you know, the wow. way that he came out here, yeah, he went out there, he went on the road playing the uh, defending NFC champions, uh, and, and really, he left no doubt in this matchup. Uh, I think without this performance, uh, the squad may not have got past uh, only to the boss in an instant week one classic. So Very true. I think Kyler uh, coming in Sunday Sunday afternoon, clinching it for squad, setting him up in good shape for that Sunday night game. I think he, he left no doubt, left squad with a, with a marquee uh, wind open the season. All right. And uh, with that, let's uh, get into week two. Let's see if Kyler can carry it over. But first, we're going to start over in the Omega Conference as Appease the Gods takes on the Skulls. All right, man, Appease the Gods open the season up as we expected with a big week one win. As we said, Edward Hilaire was the man on Thursday night with the big debut. And of course, Lamar Jackson picked up where he left off last season with a big game. And of course, Noah Fant put the icing on the cake on Monday night still in the victory uh, with a 16-point game and a touchdown. Uh, obviously, on the Skull side, Deshaun Watson was okay. Aaron Johnson was all right. Uh, but uh, they couldn't get much going, man. What do you think of this matchup? It seems like a, a, a mismatch uh, from last week, but this week the projection is pretty tight. What do you got with a piece of the guys in the Skulls? I think there's these two teams that are trending in the opposite direction. Okay. Um, I, think, I think, you know, a piece of the guys did what they, they needed to do. Last week, uh, got a got a big win against the Twins. Uh, big winning in Omega this year. I think uh, Omega's kind of a toss-up conference this year. They're you know 
Uh, so we'll see who, who gets it. Uh, so getting that win was pretty clutch. I think getting a different coach uh, in, in this week will, will strengthen their bid. Mm-hmm. And frankly, I think that they just have solid matchups up and down, uh, favorable to, to their players. The other side, I'm not sure what's happening in Cleveland. Uh, we saw what happened with, uh, with the Skulls. I mean, DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett are great. Uh, I'm playing both of them. I don't know. It's risky, boom or bust. Uh, right. But otherwise, I think that the, the team's all right. But with Le'Veon Bell having that question mark, uh, this team is already, I think, not as deep at the position. And so I think the Skulls have a lot to be worried about. Okay. They may be wanting to package one of those receivers somewhere to get to get a, a, another running Solid back. Running back. Yeah, I think that the 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 appease the gods wins this one fairly comfortably. I'm gonna get this one thirty six to one fourteen. All right. Um you know what? I, I smell an upset here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. The, I'm gonna lean the other way. I think Deshaun Watson actually comes out and has a big day in a shootout with Baltimore. Not saying Houston wins, but I think he's gonna fare much better than he did last year in that matchup. And I think that that can lead to a 20 plus point game uh, for him to help the Skulls kick it off. I think Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb are gonna get a lot of carries and a lot of opportunities to run. I think that the uh, Bengals or the Browns are starting to realize that Baker Mayfield in the passing game just isn't gonna be what wins them any games. They're gonna have to commit to Hunt and Chubb, and I think that both of those guys have enough uh, to be effective. And then Aaron Jones, uh, Green Bay's offense looked like one of the best offenses in the league last week, Um, and I expect that to continue against Detroit in the home opener. I think Aaron Jones runs wild. Uh, Two guys against that New England defense. Belichick showing that he can still scheme. But on the other side, I mean, yeah, uh, Lamar Jackson appeased the guys. They they, they got it all. I'm kind of worried about Joe Mixon right now, but we'll see what happens there. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire had a lot of carries near the goal line. That was a sneaky little thing no one talk, talked about. And he got stuffed on a lot of those goal line carries. I don't know if he gets as many opportunities or if they try to go with a different approach near the goal line. That remains to be monitored. I really don't like uh, Tampa Bay's situation right now. Uh, Godwin isn't concussion protocol, but Mike Evans isn't 100% either. Allen Robinson is asking for a holdout. It's just a lot of moving parts on ATG right now despite the week one win. I think the Skulls get by 122 uh, to 117. Moving on to our next matchup, we go into the Alpha Conference as Squad Underestimated takes on the Baby Gas team. All right, man, Squad Underestimated. The matchup they needed to win last week, uh, uh, the boss came to play, and, the, and they, they, they fought back big, uh, hit them hard. Uh, like you said, Kyler Murray uh, came with a great counterpunch in the afternoon, and they finished them off with Saquon. Uh, on the BGT side, Cam looked great. He was fun. Dalvin was fun, but uh, and, and I mean they hung, hung in the matchup with Mean Machine, but we kind of knew that they were gonna go down just based on that roster. What do you think of this one? Uh, again, I don't see this one being that close this week. Um, I think that just looking at Squad's roster, I, I, you know, I, I'll say I'm, I'm higher on this team after seeing that week one performance. Okay. I saw a lot of room for improvement, and the fact that he's putting up 160 points with uh, Saquon not even having a very good day, right. um, I think it makes this team dangerous. Okay. I'm feeling really. I think he's gonna he's gonna be factoring for for uh, probably top touches at, at the position. Uh, they're feeding him. Yeah. Kenny Galladay, his his number one draft pick, didn't even play last week. So okay. I think that this team is really built. Um, I think that if I have one knock, he's got two guys from Baltimore, he's got two guys from New Orleans. Not bad teams to have two guys on. It just means that if things go bad there, you could have a disproportionate impact. Right. I look across the way. I mean, Cam, Cam look great. And I think that Belichick is really going to coach to his strengths. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, he's at got Melvin Gordon, Dalvin Cook, but I know he was really relying on Mark Ingram more. Like, you know, frankly, he looks like he's lost a step. And oh, wow. I think that J.K. Dobbins coming for that spot. And so it, it really helps. It, I think it's going to hurt a team that really didn't have that much depth to be with. Mm-hmm. And, and really, I don't see the BGT winning. Uh, Frankly, many games with Buccaneers at coach. Okay. I'm not buying it right now. Wow. The hype was, it seems to be just that. They got a lot to work out in Tampa Bay. Mm. So uh, I think that squad, they, they buy for another league, no doubt, performance. I'm going to say they go 145 to the BJ, uh, BGT's 128. Uh, I have to agree with you, man. Uh, like you said, I mean, Kyler Murray uh, wasn't my favorite uh, performance, but uh, it was a great performance by Kyler. Uh, it, on the road against uh, the defending NFC champ. So, uh, and I expect him to 
to really ball out in the home opener against the Washington defense that was dead in the water in that first half until Carson Wentz uh, went Tony Romo. Um, but looking at the rest of this matchup, uh, Saquon, Christian McCaffrey, Adam Thielen, Kenny Galladay didn't play last week. That was his first round pick. He plays this week. I like Kenny Galladay. I really do. I like that he stretches the field, and he's he's a fifty point, uh, fifty yard bonus kind of guy, uh, a forty yard bonus kind of guy. So uh, with Kenny Galladay in the matchup, it just brings even more explosion to a team that's got a great red zone tight end, and Marquise Hollywood Brown is one of the ultimate uh, pro football home run threats. I love Cam. I love the approach with Cam, but the rest of the team just and Dalvin Cook, but the rest of the team gives leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, if Philip Lindsay is hampered, I do love Melvin Gordon in that Bronco offense. Uh, I'm looking at uh, T.Y. Hilton. I love it. Uh, just because I think that once Philip Rivers f realizes, hey, this guy can beat any corner in the league deep, Rivers will start to go there. And I think Minnesota showed last week, hey, they can't cover anybody. But other than that, I don't like much else on the BGT. I got squad underestimated winning this one. I'm not going to go 140. I'll go 138 um, to 122. Moving on to our next matchup, we have the United Players of Destroyers taking on the Gaff Attack. All right, man, Omega Conference uh, showdown here between the United Players of Destroyers and the Gaff. Uh, the Gaff scored 142, but I mean, you kind of question where it came from. And then the United Players of Destroyers, obviously, they got no doubt left on them in, in their matchup and really had no answer. What do you think of these two teams in the matchup? I mean, just Gaff will win to win. Um, looking at this matchup, though, I, I, I think that, that he's going to have a fairly uh, easy time if the, if the rosters don't change the match. Chris Godner is, again, in the protocol. Um, I, don't, I don't think he's going to play this weekend. Uh, your number one pick, Gronkowski, uh, he was more than a reach last week. Right. And then, you know, your number two pick's not even in your lineup right now. So, I mean, what did the draft really mean to the United players is yet to be determined. Right. Um, it's hard for me to really take this, this, this team seriously when I think their best skilled player uh, positions right now is probably Andy Ritt. Okay. Uh, with that Chiefs <laughs> coach spot, uh, as far as guaranteed points. Um, I look at the other side, and, you know, it's going to be interesting. I think the Gaff wins this matchup relatively easy. Um, that being said, there there are some injury concerns. But more importantly, I I mean, I don't understand why Dak Prescott's in the lineup right now. Oh. Uh, you had a guy that you... you well, that was the second pick overall two. in the draft, uh, Ulysses. Second, yeah, his second pick in the draft, and, and frankly, he's sitting second in points right now at mm. the position. And you know what? It's going to be again, fascinating because guess who Dak is playing this week? The Atlanta Falcons that, that Russell carved up. So, you know, I think he's thinking, oh, it's that that Falcons D, you know, is going to give it up when he may find out that it's just because Russell's better than Dak. Right. And, uh, and, and that, that, that uh, passing attack and scheme is better. So, you know, I've got a lot of question marks around Dallas right now. Mm. Um not impressive week one, and if I was if I was Gaff, I wouldn't I wouldn't be trusting Dak to figure his his issues out on my starting lineup when I got Russell Wilson sitting on the bench. Right. So I think he wins this match at one twenty one to one oh eight. Okay. Um, this one's probably one of the tougher matchups because I don't know who either of these teams are right now. Uh, they're very. I mean, they can they can switch positions from last week. I can see United players going for one forty two and the Gaff going for one oh one. Um, very, very easily. And I mean, I, I guess I'm going to go with the United players, the destroyers, because I do believe that the Buccaneers are going to try to save face in a way. And I think that they're going to try to implement a game plan that's going to get Brady a lot of cheap uh, yards and statistics. So I think that Brady's going to be a, a pretty good play, even though I don't like a, some of the other pieces in that offense this week. Um, but I think Brady's going to be a good play because, I mean, the, the, he's throwing it to guys that aren't even part of what we were supposed to be this super team that are getting yards. So you, you never know with Brady. He's just going to go with what the easy throw is. Um, and I think that uh, Carolina's going to make a lot of make a lot of plays for him. I mean, Derek Carr had a pretty good game against them. Um, Derek Henry, I love his matchup against Jacksonville, and I like Kenyon Drake's matchup against Washington. If Godwin does clear protocol, I mean – I like the United players actually in this matchup a little bit more if he's able to clear protocol and if they get Bar uh, Boston Scott out of their lineup. I don't know what they're thinking there. Um, on the Gaff side, 
I don't really like. I mean, I know that uh, Malcolm Brown had a good game against Dallas last week, um, but the Falcons are a passing team, and and, and Todd Gurley kind of lost a step. I'm with you completely on the Dak situation. He probably should have just uh, went best available number two, and and, and he would have got Russell where he got him because having both of them is just is just going to be an annoyance because when you have one of these guys going off on your bench when the other guy's struggling. You know, it, it just it just makes it a disaster. Where I do love the gaff is at wide receiver. Juju and, and D Hop, they have a huge timeshare of their offenses. And I think that that could help carry him through this matchup. But I'm gonna lean with the um, the United Players of Destroyers. I like their coach play, I like their defense play, I like their kicker. They get their flex right. I, I think that they got the good matchup. I even like Julian Edelman on Sunday night. I'm gonna go with the United Players here, one eighteen, uh, to the gaff attacks one eleven. And moving on to our next matchup, we go into our interconference matchup of the week as Patty Spins takes on only for the boss. All right, man, both of these teams came up on the losing end. Patty's twins uh, fizzled out. Uh, they only got uh, production really from Aaron Rodgers and then only for the boss. I mean, they, they lost uh, uh, in a valiant defeat uh, with uh, Patrick Mahomes, Raheem Mozart, and Calvin Ridley really... Uh, putting on uh, the points for them. What do you think of this matchup, uh, Patty Swins and only for the boss? Yeah, I think Patty Swins gets right this week. Um, I think that a lot of her team struggled last week, but, uh, I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers did what he, what he does. Okay. And, frankly, he's at a point in his career where I think he's going to try to exclamation point every game he's in um, with, the, with the, the things that have been said about the placement draft over, over the last uh, year. So I, I think Aaron's going to be balling out all season after what I saw. Um, he certainly has the tools available to him and the coach is going to feed it. So I think that this team gets right. I just think that uh, especially looking at the, their I mean, extreme beneficiaries of unfortunately Marlon Mack's injury, okay. uh, Jonathan Taylor was uh, you know right there at that number two spot at, at RV and uh, slid all the way into the second round. So right. everybody had a crack at him. And so now we've got a young guy who's, uh, who's a, a rookie projecting 14 points. I mean, right. You look across the way, James Conner was uh, that number uh, three pick in the draft could have been Jonathan Taylor. And mm. he, he frankly just didn't get it done last week. So I think uh, that's something to be considered uh, in Really, I think we'll see a different look from Kansas City this week. Why I say that is they're playing a divisional rival. I right. expect that divisional rival to just be better prepared for what's going to come. Not saying they're going to win, right. but I think that, that, that it's not going to be as uh, high scoring as one. Okay. Uh, you know, with the coach pick there, you got a, 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 a you know, Super Bowl uh, rematch there, which is intriguing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that the Eagles are going to get right, though, and I think the Twins are going to win a, a very close one. But I think that they're gonna, they're going to get right. And I'm going to say they win this one, 134 to 131. Okay. Um, I have to go the other way with this one. The boss showed last week that they're, they're going to be in it uh, all year long. And they showed a scoring potential that I really don't believe Patty's Twins has. Um, I mean, let's think about last week. Aaron Rodgers went off for 36, man. And Patty's Twins still didn't crack 100. How often has that ever happened to the Twins, where Aaron Rodgers goes off and they can't muster 100 points? This team may be on the other end uh, right now. Uh, when I look at only for the boss, they're they're on the front end. They, they're on the rise. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, he can match anything Aaron Rodgers throws out there. I, I, I'm with you on the James Conner situation, but I think Ronald Jones is going to get a lot of carries. He can he can swap Conner. I mean, and then they're saying Conner might even play. So I mean, he can still go there, but I would I, I wouldn't trust Conner right now based on what I saw Monday night. I may want to just play with uh, Ronald Jones and then Raheem Mozart. I mean, if the 49ers... I mean, they've decided since he's kind of blown up that he's going to be a big part of the game plan. I love him as the RB2. Calvin Ridley showed what he can do. Tyreek Hill's a monster. He's got the two fastest receivers in the league as his one and two. And then he's got uh, Kelsey and the sure-handed Stephon Diggs. I love only for the boss's roster. I love the way Robert Woods is used on the twin side, but not much, and, and David Johnson, but not much else, really. Jonathan Taylor is still a lot to be seen. Naheem Hines went off. So you know that he's going to be a part of the game plan. It's just too many question marks with the Twins. I'm going only for the boss here. I say they leave no doubt this week. Uh, 141 uh, to 117. 
All right. And moving on to our final matchup, we go into the prestige matchup of the week as the back-to-back -back defending Pantheon Cup champions, the Argonauts, take on the Mean Machine. All right, man. Alpha Conference Showdown, Argo, Mean Machine. Argonauts left no doubt last week behind Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs. Mean Machine got a solid victory behind Alvin Kamara and uh, I think a TD from DJ Shark. Uh, what do you think of this matchup, man? Uh, old school Alpha Conference rivalry. Uh, the Mean Machine, though, lately hasn't been able to keep up their end of it. What do you think, Argo Mean Machine? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I think it, it has the potential to be a, uh, a solid matchup, I, but I, I don't know. Um, really stacked uh, talent-wise to the Argos, uh, looking at the Mean Machine. I mean, you just look line by line. And I, I don't think that this is the final lineup. If okay. I'm the Argonauts, I, I'm giving Matt Ryan a shot against uh, against Dallas. Okay. Uh, he put up some solid numbers last week. I think that he fell in this draft. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's sitting fourth at the position. Drew is at 23, and, and, and I think... Um, is it you know, that old think, Argo loyalty? Yeah, I mean, I think it might be, but I, I know that... that, that you know, Matt Ryan looks good, and, and Dallas looked like he could be exposed. Okay. So uh, I'd be surprised if that move doesn't happen. And, and really, I'm not in love with this Nick Chubb projection. Mm. I think it's high. I okay. think that they've got a timeshare backfield, and they don't know what they're doing with their play calling. Uh, Cincinnati doesn't either, but this is a divisional matchup. I don't expect it to be high scoring. And, man, you have – Wow. Uh, looking at the other side, Daniel Jones, I mean, he might be the guy, but, uh, I mean, I, I guess he, he's going to have to be because they don't, they don't have anybody else. I'm kind of surprised with that. Um, I think we could find someone better at the position, either, either through a trade or because most teams are, are rocking two solid quarterbacks. And, and again, Daniel Jones hasn't proven to me. Um, and then you look at, look at how the draft picks, uh, you know, Paris start panning out. He picked uh, Cam Akers in the first round, didn't really do much, and he isn't starting this week. So, right. uh, again, you know, when you're when you're picking first-round guys, you know, well, whatever you can start to line up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just kind of looking at the, you know, down the roster, you know, you've got a lot of, you've got Chiefs D on one side, Patriots D on the other, Ravens coach, Steelers coach. I mean, I think that these teams are, are pretty stacked at the bottom end. They'll do well down there. It just for me, this just comes down to talent. Um, I just think that that uh, you know the the ceiling's really high on this Argo team, especially with uh, some potential bench moves. I think that they leave no doubt again. Uh, I'm going to say that they do that one uh, forty eight to one nineteen. Okay, uh, I'll agree with you that they're going to win. I don't know about leaving no doubt. Um, when I do look at this matchup, I think the one of the biggest things and, and why I probably do agree with you with the Matt Ryan uh, pick is that there's no Michael Thomas this week, man. Michael Thomas is is a big part of what the Mean Machine does, and they were lucky to win with him only having about four points last week. That was a really, really uh, low-key situation that no one really talked about was that Michael Thomas was very quiet last week before the injury. Um, and I think that's going to that's gonna have an effect on the Mean Machine in the matchup that they may need to put up a lot of points. Uh, looking on to other things, uh, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. Zach Moss looks like he's there to stay in, in Buffalo's uh, rushing attack. And, and that might spell doom for Devin Singletary. But I think that with Miles Sanders coming into the lineup, that's, we're finally going to start to see what the Mean Machine envisioned when they picked that guy last year in the first round. So I'm, I'm excited to see Miles Sanders play. Um, I don't understand why Amari Cooper wasn't uh, in their flex last week. I think he's a he's a sad and forget guy, even though he has his issues. I, I would say based on what they have on their roster, they can't really afford to have Amari Cooper out of the lineup. Um, looking around at other things, they, they're not going Odell. And like you said, I probably really don't blame them. Um, on the Argonaut side, yeah, maybe you're right about Nick Chubb, but I think that uh, Stefanski, who was the coach of the, or the offensive coordinator of the Vikings last uh, week, Gave Baker his head to try uh, Sunday, um, and and and, he, and and it was a decisive defeat. You know, he 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 failed big time. He fa he failed on his face, um, and I think that now they're going to go with that run heavy approach. And uh, I don't think that Cincinnati can jump up on them like Baltimore can. 
And I think that this will be a bounce back game for Nick Chubb. I like him this week. Um, Devontae Adams, oh my gosh. I mean, with Aaron Rodgers looking the way he's looking back back in form, uh, Devontae Adams is going to have probably a scary season if he can stay healthy. Julio Jones is Julio Jones. George Kittle is another big uh, part of this matchup. He could be out um, this week. That could uh, change things for the Argonauts uh, in that situation. But let's talk about Josh Jacobs, man. This dude is sitting there. Uh, on Monday Night Football uh, against Alvin Kamara. So it's going to be fireworks all the way up to the end. But I'm with, with you. Argonauts win uh, 129 uh, to 120. I think that the uh, matchup may have come down uh, to the Argonauts having a late lead and Josh Jacobs helping them keep it. All right, ladies and gents, thanks for another week of PPL Live. Ulysses S. Hayden, Gino the Gent signing off. See you next week.